Okay, today I'm going to try and explain instantaneous action at a distance and uh, how it works. Well, I've said that um, the whole of the universe is encompassed in a electromagnetic web. Electromagnetic fields, everything that you can see is interacting with the next thing um, due to electromagnetic fields. Now, I've said there's two different kind of waves. You've got a static wave and a non-static wave. Now, the Archimedes screw here, this is a moving wave. This would be energy uh, extending, let's say. But um, the point is, is that electromagnetic fields are standing waves until energy is introduced into the system. It is when energy is introduced into the system that the magnetic field rotates like an Archimedes screw. So if I have uh, a long screw, flexible, that was extended from here to the moon, if I turn my end on Earth, how quickly will the other end of this uh, Archimedes screw, how long will it take for the other end to move? Well, it would be instantaneous. And I've said that all electromagnetic fields um, have vortex fingers coming off them and they are double helix. That is one helix on screen, an Archimedes screw. But when energy is introduced into the system, these electromagnetic fields rotate. Now, I actually have this on video. So I've said that all electromagnetic fields look like that Archimedes screw, except there's two of them. So to prove this, um, I'd have to actually show the field rotating as we see on screen. Uh, this is part, the Archimedes screw would be as if it was a magnet field. So once you introduce the matter, which is drawing in energy from the atmosphere, I don't know if people call that the ether. If the ether is a world, a universal web that is interacting with everything, then sure, it's the ether. But it's the electromagnetic field that rotates like that screw and moves matter. On a magnet, that is exactly what happens um, to the field when you introduce, let's say, ferrofluid. Except it's a double helix, because this on screen is balls being uh, fed in. That doesn't happen with ferrofluid. Because there's a double helix, as it instantaneous rotates from the edge to the center of the magnet, as the two feel rotational fields cross each other, one traveling clockwise uh, and one traveling counterclockwise, like two springs rotating together, it shuttles the matter backwards. And so my explanation of electromagnetic fields and energy and energy travel is proven correct because uh, about concerning instantaneous action at a distance. And it's because electromagnetic fields rotate once you introduce energy into the system. And that energy could be coming from a star um, light years away or from ferrofluid going into a magnet. So I said I can reproduce what's on screen and I've already done it, but I didn't mention instantaneous action at a distance when I did it. So instantaneous action at a distance is due to an electromagnetic field rotating. And because an electromagnetic field is attached to an object, whether it be an atom or a magnet, these fingers extend outwards and grab hold of, let's just say ferrofluid, because that's going to be my example. So instantaneous action is caused because all electromagnetic fields are an Archimedes screw with one end attached to the center of the magnet, which becomes electricity inside the magnet. And the other end is a waving arm, which I have shown on video with two magnets and ferrofluid. So now I'll just show you uh, a magnet rotating matter in by instantaneous action of an electromagnetic field rotating with two free ends rotating in a double helix, which brings matter in, in spheres, and uh, that's a rotating wave. A, uh, a static wave would make a seed pod. And you can go look at my seed pod videos to see that it's the exact same arrangement of energy flow. And it forms a seed where 
these balls are actually traveling because this is a non-static standing wave, whereas a seed pod is a standing wave. Okay, let's have a look at the video. And so there we see the ferroflue being introduced and immediately five double helixes grab hold of the matter and start rotating it in, which means there must be an end on this magnet for it to be rotating to bring something in. Otherwise, it would be attached all over and so the ferrofluid would go everywhere, but it's not. I've shown on my scroll lock video that magnets have three fingers on either side of the magnet. And so this is a non-static standing wave, which means once energy is introduced into it, it begins to rotate and pump in the matter in spheres. Now, in a static standing wave, um, it would merely form seeds in a seed pod. And I've shown this on the video. So, yes, this is instantaneous action at a distance. Exactly the same as the Archimedes screw, but there's two of them rotating in unison clockwise and counterclockwise to form the sphere within the double helix. So every time you imagine a double helix in your head, like figure eights all the way down, inside every circle is this material. And as it rotates, it shuttles matter backwards. And so you get instantaneous action at a distance caused by electromagnetic fields with energy entering the system. And so the screw uh, starts to rotate at ground level, but it is also rotating at boundary level at exactly the same moment. And that is how instantaneous action at a distance is achieved. It's quite easy, really, especially when God's your teacher. So uh, learn wisdom from me because I learned it from God in visions in 2014 for three weeks, day and night. And uh, yeah, instantaneous action at a distance is because one end is attached to a power source and it's a coiled up double helix that immediately spins. So the other end of this double helix, no matter how long it is, will instantaneously move at the same speed. So light traveling within the electromagnetic field will instantaneously appear at the other end. Funny, eh? Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I'll follow the Christ, and I'm telling you all about the things that he tells and shows me. Thanks a lot. Bye.